Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. We got, we've got quite a show today. We're gonna, we got some visitors from, from Washington, uh, one of which uh, happened to run for office. Kind of interesting sort of a non-traditional way aspect of it. And uh, I think there's going to be some very interesting comments coming from the gentleman we're going to, inter- we're going to be talking to from Washington. Okay. And the second half hour, we're going to have uh, Renee Kimball. You know, you know Renee, and she's got some very interesting announcement. And we're going to spend some time with her talking about this newfound, if you will, movement. Very interesting. But before we do that, uh, what we're going to do is that we're going to celebrate one among our crew who happens to have a birthday, been around for a number of years, okay. taught me everything, taught Tom and, and Dave and Tim, yeah, just the whole world. So what we're going to do, we're going to, we've got this birthday cake here sitting on the table, and uh, come on in, guys, and we're going to, we're going to probably see, if we, where, where's Jim, where's Jim, get, get Jim, get, tell Jim to come on over here and get him Jim's over here, he, he, can't, he, can't, he can't come, he can't come, no. Tom, come on in, okay, you, Tom will sup too for Jim, make sure, Yay. Now what are we gonna do? Now Dave, this is this is this is Dave's bir- bir- birthday, okay? Yeah, Here we go. We got like the we got one candle. He won't tell us how old he is. Okay. Do we get okay. to sing happy birthday? Yeah, we're gonna sing happy okay, birthday to him. Happy happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Dave. Happy birthday to you. All right, all right. Now now blow blow the candle out. Blow the candle out, buddy. Hard what happened? Hard. You got to blow the candle out. <laughs> blow the candle out, Dave. What's wrong? What's wrong with the candle? It's a trick candle. No, no. <laughs> 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 Happy birthday, Dave. Okay. All right, buddy. Happy birthday, Dave. Thank you. There, there you go. go. See that, that old jar here, you know? <laughs> Take it on out there, Dave. You guys eat the cake while we do the show. How's that? Is that fair? That sounds good. Uh, Renee. Renee, serve the cake so I'll have a piece, okay. please. On yeah. the way back. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, good. All right. Okay. All right. Well, now on with the show. Welcome again, folks. And it's always good to recognize some of the people of the crew. We've been we've been together for a number of number of years, and it's very. You know, I'm so excited myself also too, and and uh, so anyway, we want to recognize the the crew and Dave for that matter. In fact, all all belated birthdays. Happy birthday, guys. Okay, all right. Now, as you know, I'm I'm still as you know I've got the I'm donning my my Viet, my Vietnam vet uh, hat on, and um, I want to make sure that. Uh, Folks, who you know your vets, your loved ones, and whatever, get them out to the VA. It's very important that they, if they've got any benefits coming to them, that they should know. The VFW is doing quite a job for those who uh, who served overseas, a veteran of foreign wars, VFW. You know that? Okay. But there was some announcement that my dear friend James, uh, who's going to be on the show about a couple weeks from now, he brought those over to me, which is nice, helping out another vet. I'll sign his card for a couple of months. That's good. Good, good deal, James. He says that the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs will be hosting town halls throughout uh, the, the Washington and Oregon to solicit input from veterans about um, health care and local VA uh, medical facilities. That's a good deal. Need to know. Good thing to do. Tuesday, September, September uh, uh, from 6 to 8 p.m., the, the American Lake VA Campus Auditorium, Building Number 9. Okay, that's Washington. Okay, right. Tuesday, September the 23rd, uh, from 9.30 to 11 a.m. 11 in the Portland VA main campus and tours. Again, g- give you a better feel of what the what the VA is all about and they educate you about your, your loved ones. You know, because a lot of times vets don't, don't like to talk about uh, their issues. They're just there and just vegetating or whatever. But anyway, but, but whether it be uh, taking care of them, uh, finding a job, uh, housing, uh, they're, those, they're, they're there as a result of some of the issues. Vets are at the front of the line, so we should take advantage of that. Okay? Good. Again, thanks for serving. You know. Now, on with the show. Got a gentleman right here. Again, I got Bill Schneider. Is that, is that right? Scheidler. 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 Mm-hmm. Scheidler. Okay. He's a cheek, cheek as, he, as his business card says, cheek activist. But the thing that, uh, and, it, and his basis byline was holding accountable corrupt public servants who betray our trust. Please like us on Facebook, okay? But the thing that, that, that interests me about Bill was the fact this was the first time he was running for office. He's going to tell you, he's going to give us a feel for how he, uh, why he got 
why he got into this business of running for office. As you know, I'm sort of an old hand at this stuff, as I indicated the bill. But it's, it, you know, and, and that's very important. You know, a lot of times we may sit down and, and uh, have issues and, and whatever, and we're constantly making the point about, well, gee whiz, no one wants to hear, hear me, this, that, and the other. But all you do is just sign on the dotted line and run for office. And you'd be surprised at the number of people that feel just like you. But you've got to get out and do something about it. That's what this country is all about, okay? So if you want to get involved, get involved. You can run for office and throw out your issues. And sometimes you can win by losing. But the fact of the matter is, if you've got issues that are really a concern to you and you feel that they're very important, why not run? And to know whether or not, in fact, those same issues are relevant to people out there in the, you know, out there in the whole world. And you'd be surprised. And if they're not, then you've learned something. And so, so we're going to take the opportunity to interview a first time of running for office in the state of Washington. And, uh, and also, he's also made the point about he's going to he's going to continue on. So we're going to get that kind of a background. Bill, welcome to the show. Thank you. OK, good. Thank you. Good. Well, why don't we just get right on into it, Bill? Uh, one, uh, first off, give us a little bit about your background. OK. And then uh, and then as you as you develop this, these issues and whatever, you got concerned and and, uh, and that you were talking to some other folks. Just lay it out to them. What oh, about your background? OK. Uh, my background, I have a degree in chemistry. Okay. And I've, uh, my professional career, I, I manage laboratories. And uh, basically from the management side of that profession. And my job was basically to come in uh, and, and troubleshoot issues that these laboratories were either underperforming or uh, clients were unhappy. So I was like a troubleshooting chemist, uh, not only for the technical aspects of the laboratory, mm -hmm. but for the management mistakes and, and uh, uh, some of the, the problems uh, associated with you know, company client interaction. So, mm -hmm. so that was my professional. As an example, what would be as an example? All right, I, as an standpoint. example, yeah. Um, one of the laboratories was a laboratory for the Department of Army. Okay. And it was, uh, its responsibility was to test the environment because it was uh, associated with the Army's chemical warfare air agents. Okay. And, uh, and because of these facilities were established within rural communities, but nevertheless people were living next to these mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. um, facilities, uh, and most of them were farmers. Occasionally, a, a sheep or a cow would die, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and uh, the people were right away suspicious as to what might have caused mm -hmm. that. So we would come in and uh, sort of troubleshoot that whole scenario, work with the farmers, and and try to. Uh, find out what if in fact it was a a, a a release of some sort and it's it we've never found it to be so but uh you know you have to take the precautions but that's that's one example that just comes to mind obviously. you know the only thing i can think about that that kind of a, that example is that you see movies you know uh, yeah you see movies you know the government comes in and all of a sudden sheep and things are dying and all yeah. of a sudden you know all of a sudden they find out they've contaminated the water does that really happen well, when I left, I left in uh, uh, 90, 1990, and uh, since then a book was published, I think it was called Something in the Air, mm -hmm. by one of, uh, one of my colleagues who I uh, worked with when I was at the Army. And uh, he, according to him, there were releases and uh, that posed a danger. So I never experienced it, but a book came out after I left that, uh, mm -hmm. so I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I can't be sure. You say, especially in the military or government, you got yeah. to have to sign documents, you know, that yeah. you can't divulge whatever, and it just yeah. carries on for years. Yeah. Wow, something else. Well, okay, now that you've given us a little bit about your background, mm -hmm. how'd you get into politics, so to speak? Why? Well, uh, when I had to retire, I had to retire from the uh, profession uh, due to medical issues. Okay. And that put me in a... Uh, a conflict. I, I, let me put it this way: uh, I learned of a corrupt county assessor uh, that was cheating people who are retired, mm. and uh, so I uh, 
So what I tried to do was get our legislators to, to address what I was finding out. Mm -hmm. And when I was bringing these issues to the legislators, they basically ignore me. And um, uh, so I felt basically the reason to run for office, I was compelled because uh, I felt this was a serious problem. And uh, if they weren't going to address it, uh, somebody needed to, and that's why I decided to run, run for office. Mm -hmm. So you, you you weren't active in the party. What party you? you well, the Republican uh, party you were. Yeah, you, I, I've uh, you, filed as a Republican, uh, uh, but I'm not an active. I'm not a. Political, you weren't active I'm at not all. a political yeah, person. Right. Okay. So okay. 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 Yeah, okay. but uh, it it was more of uh, uh, reacting uh, to uh, a problem that no one seemed to want to. To address, mm -hmm. so that's why I decided to run for office. So when you when you approached him, I guess you probably knew what the what the what the profile was from the standpoint that you you tell me what the issues are. They're supposed to diagnose that and then get back to you from the standpoint of whether or not it's on the books or yeah. something that would be of a benefit, if you will, of the, the concern you're talking about would be of benefit to the public at large. That's right. And, and you went to them that way, and it's it's a good point. Uh, so how did they respond? I mean. Well, more specifically. Well, they ignored it, and the reason I believe they ignored it... Now, this was a colleague, a Republican colleague at, at, at the time, right? Yeah, the, uh, was, my representatives was, uh, was, that that I went to were right, Republicans. Republican, okay. And I supported them when they ran. Mm -hmm. uh, but I learned that uh, when I take an issue to a, a legislator, the first thing they do is pass it past their legal department. And the legal, the lawyers that, and I think they manhandle our legislators, uh, want, didn't want this issue brought up because if, if, they, if they addressed it and, and found that the county was uh, defrauding citizens, were the other counties defrauding citizens? Mm -hmm. Were the other ones? And if they were, how much money mm -hmm. would be at stake mm -hmm. Because they were they were mm -hmm. defrauding mm -hmm. citizens and and uh, collecting, in one case it would be an un unlawful tax. Mm -hmm. So, so the lawyers I guess didn't want our representatives to address this issue, mm -hmm. so that the uh, so that it would just simply die on the vine. So well, did your legislator respond back to you in writing, or, or how, how did they do that? Well. Uh, it was interesting. My the the legislator actually sent me some uh, very interesting evidence, but but no comments. So mm -hmm. I I've, I've received as file attachments some documents that support uh, the fraud that uh, uh, shows that they were that the departments that were involved in this case the Department of Revenue. Mm -hmm was involved in helping conceal from the public the fraud that these assessors were perpetrating upon the public. Mm -hmm. I, uh, when I got those documents, uh, I consulted an attorney. And uh, when I showed him everything I had, he agreed with me. He said, you're absolutely right. This is, this is a fraud upon citizens. Mm -hmm. And he agreed to take the case. What happened is the day before the hearing, uh, he called me, my attorney called me and said that he is being forced off the case due to a conflict of interest. So uh, the case basically died at that point because I didn't have the ability to, to do anything. At, to, to, the, the hearing was the following day and uh, uh, there was very little I could do. So I, I just started to, to, to question the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Like, why isn't the legislators addressing this? Why are they being told uh, not uh, by their lawyers what, not to take it? Why was my lawyer pulled off the very day before the hearing? So I started publishing this on, a, on my website. And uh, uh, this was a few years back, five or six years back. And I started to get emails and letters and phone calls. Hmm. And the letters and emails all centered on uh, judicial and attorney misconduct. And uh, it was in child uh, uh, custody cases, in 
uh, guardianship cases, uh, they all were finding that uh, judges and lawyers were simply lying because money is involved in, in child custody. Money is involved in guardianship. Mm -hmm. And so all of these data points started to emerge. And, it, and, and you're awakening. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> About the and money, right? Yes. <laughs> and uh, so it became important to me that mm -hmm. this needed to be addressed because mm -hmm. uh, if, if our judicial system is, is corrupt, who looks out for us? Who, who can we trust? And uh, so all of these data points uh, emerged, and um, along with those data points came other activists that were looking, who were, who happened to be already well ahead of me in the in this issue, uh, were sh were telling me how the what what's going on, and and what we're finding is the legal establishment is. They're, they're having their lawyer, I mean, the law, not every, and I, I want to be clear, not all lawyers are bad lawyers, you know, it's, yeah. but, but the lawyers have their tentacles in the legislative branch, in the executive branch, and, and uh, they fully occupy the judicial branch. So if they want to cover up something like this, they have the people already in the offices to, to cover it up and make sure that happens, or at least drag it on for for well in my case it's it's still going on in 12 years hmm, so, really hmm. yeah so then now now that it's a, now you're, you're running for office now you yeah. filed you run for office right and you run for rep represent house of Rep Re house of representatives what yeah. district was that 26 26 and yeah. who was the incumbent the incumbent is jesse young jesse young he's republican, a republican Democrat, republican yeah and those, that's the person you basically approach that's no well uh no, I approached my, the senator, Senator Jan Angel. Jan yeah, Angel. Yeah. But what, what about the representative? Did, did he? He. Did, uh, did, did you ever talk with him? He about was actually thing? appointed after the issue had already matured to the point, so I never got a chance to. Uh, actually, I did send him something, but uh, he never responded, and he mm. explained that he never got it. So. Mm. So I. You know. So now that, but but now that you, he, he, I take it he is in the in the general election now, right? Now he's in the general election. Okay. Right. And is he familiar with the the, the issues that you? Yeah. Uh, he is, he's now familiar with. Yeah. The when when I threw my hat in the ring, right. you know, he was concerned right off the bat. Did he meet with you then? We had a phone call. Okay. But and, you, had to, you communicated. Yeah, and we talked, and I told him, I said, you know, I said, look, it, I don't have an uh, an option here. Uh, I said I brought these issues to Jan Angel, who was a Republican senator. Mm -hmm. And I said, and I recall sending you an email about it, which you never responded to. What was his response? He says that, well, he says I was appointed only six months earlier. He didn't have a staff. So he blamed it on, on an administrative oversight that he didn't get to this issue. But uh, we talked about it and I said, you know, I don't my 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 uh, respect for politics is fairly low. I I I think it's it's a lot of lying and deceit and dishonesty. So I think our our representatives have to walk. They have to be so ambiguous to not yeah. really uh, present a, a true mm -hmm. uh, point of view because it would alienate anybody who didn't agree with it. Mm -hmm. So. So, uh, but what about him? Did, did uh, after you talked yeah. to him over the phone, did he respond in a in a positive direction, or did he, did he kind of like? He he said, Bill, I I respect your uh, your motivation because he saw that that the issue was important to me, and he's there. I while I'm a Republican, he's there. I'm afraid that uh, by you being in the race, you know, we're we're going to dilute the. The vote, and and he had some concern that the Democratic challenger. So he was looking at it from a, a strategic point of view, you know, of me. Yeah, but but if it, but if it's an issue that could be of benefit to the people, I yeah, because it's still a it's supposed to be a government of the people by the people for the people, yeah, right? right? That's one of the major purposes why a person yeah. is running, right? Yeah, and so he should either tell you one way, one or the other. This is something that's already on the books, or this is something that maybe sh we should put on the books. Yeah. And this is how we're going to do it. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to put together a committee, and I want you to chair the committee. Did he do that? 
Yeah, more he, or less. He, he did but, that. Yeah, he, he says, uh, he said that, uh, uh, that he'd be willing to sponsor legislation and uh, uh, that I'd be a, a, an important component in, in helping him draft such legislation. And I said that wasn't really the problem because the problem is we have laws on the books now. The problem isn't a lack of uh, laws. It's a problem of judges and lawyers disregarding the laws. Mm. So, so when he heard that, um, it was more of a deeper issue than one of legislation. It was an mm. issue of we have corruption. We don't have we don't have a lack of legislation. We have an issue of corruption here. Mm -hmm. So. I don't think they have a plan yet as mm -hmm. to how to deal with it. Is he encouraging you running for office as far as the solution is concerned? I don't think he would. Jesse and I, are, are we see eye to eye on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And I know he respects my, my position, and I respect him. And uh, uh, so I think whether or not uh, he, he would encourage me, he knows I'm interested in continuing because I have a continuing interest in this issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so he knows I'll be back in the game if something isn't done about it mm -hmm. uh, in, in the next two years if he's elected. Mm -hmm. well, you know, I was just thinking, some of the areas in regards to that platform that you were talking to, mm -hmm. uh, you sort of listed them down, and I thought it would be interesting to, to go through some of sure. those. Sure. Now, you, you, made, you made a statement that to, to, manage, to manage risk by frustrating any effort to hold accountable, accountable public servants, in other words, control government, the judicial branch, the legislative branch, and the executive branch, and manipulate the people. Right. Okay, so, so these are some of these, the tactics, right, that they use. That's Why right. don't we go through those and you just kind of give us a, give me a brief in terms of, uh, of these areas, just yeah. what, what you're trying to say. Okay, okay, establish procedural rules that courts must follow and the legislature must follow. What do you mean by that? Okay, uh, the way these... Uh, important issues sort of get sidetracked or or shuffled off and never really addressed is uh, each body has they establish procedural rules well let me back up when you take office any office you're supposed to swear to the Constitution and right. laws. well all that goes away once you get into office uh, and and now you have to sign that you ha will uh, abide by the procedures that the legislature is established to control their body. You know, you have a certain way of doing things. Right. You have to, uh, you know, uh, what is it, a caucus, or I'm mm -hmm. not sure what mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and, and the courts, they too, even though they take an oath to the Constitution and the laws, they create procedural rules. So what they do is they pull, when they want to avoid an issue, or when they want to uh, ignore it or, or sort of uh, uh, discount it, they pull up a, a, a rule, a procedural rule that allows them to either uh, push the issue on the back burner never to see the light of day hmm. or, uh, or it gives them the power to just dismiss it. So, hmm. so it's a tactic that they use uh, to, to stifle Mm -hmm. uh, their obligations to the people. Okay, okay. Let's see, another one you had done, use the legal establishment in a way that puts lawyers in all branches of government. Yeah. What, uh, there are, first of all, our, our judicial branch, uh, unless you are a member of the Washington State Bar, you can't hold any office in the judicial branch. So all of our judges are lawyers, all of the, uh, 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 ethics boards are staffed by lawyers and judges so it, it's a it's a club that's simply staffed by members of Washington State Bar mm -hmm. now Washington State Bar lawyers are also running as legislators okay okay so now we have uh, the tentacles of the Washington State Bar reaching into our legislative mm -hmm. branch by virtue of them running as legislators. Okay. Okay, once they become a legislator and also a member of the Washington State Bar, they dilute that office. They can no longer vote. 
hmm. on issues that deal with the legisl or deal with deal with the judicial branch or the Washington State Bar. Hmm. The Constitution prohibits uh, a legislator from supporting, introducing, voting on any bill or measure in the legislature that they're interested mm -hmm. in. Clearly, a Washington State Bar lawyer yeah, yeah. has an interest yeah. in the Washington State Bar Judicial yeah, Branch. Yeah. So, um, and furthermore, just like I, I mentioned earlier, when I went to my legislator on this problem, she had to pass it, get, get approval from a lawyer mm -hmm. before she addressed it as my legislator. Mm -hmm. So how do, how do I trust my legislator to represent me if she has to get an okay from another Washington State Bar lawyer. So, mm. so their tentacles are reaching into all of our branches of service, and once, they, once they've occupied it, who, who are you going to complain to if you have a problem with a judicial right. branch? Right. Okay. The other one you got to you know is create an environment that helps shield this strategy or help justify it. For example, use events such as Occupy Wall Street or the Aurora and high school shooting as a ways to justify additional government control? Well, these, what we were speaking out about uh, is, is unlawful. They're, they're taking control of us through deceit and deception. Uh, by by uh, creating more justified control, in other words, you have gun control. Mm -hmm. Okay, if legislation is getting passed that we voters say, yes, we need government to control who and and uh, uh, who may buy and sell a gun, that's another control. Yeah. Okay, so if if we start voting upon ourselves the controls that uh, we give government on us, then these unlawful controls sort of get buried. They're... They, they, they blend in a little easier, okay? So that's what I mean by that, by, by creating, by government uh, being giving mm -hmm. proper control over what we do as citizens. Mm -hmm. This unlawful control gets camouflaged and, and buried in the weeds, so to speak. Okay, we got about, we got about three, three more minutes left. Okay. Uh, this last, so there was four others, and we'll just go through. I'll sure. read them both, and then you just comment. Render imp important any important any challenger by having lawyers and judges literally destroy any person that gets too close right pro se's are nearly always defeated and subject to sanctions for bringing cases against government interesting right. and then the last one was one tactic that clearly suggests our government is controlling what they do and how they do it is in the makeup of ethics boards okay uh all of our ethics boards are staff or are are staffed by handpicked members from the agencies which the ethics board is supposed to regulate. Hmm. So uh, by by handpicking their own uh, policemen, yeah. uh, the the conduct is you know what what happens or the conduct that that's imposed upon us by those public servants are really in their own hands. So uh, that's what I meant by that. Okay, now we've gone through at least five of these items that you're mm -hmm. talking about. Uh, let's see some last comments. So you are going to be running again, right? I w this is an important and, issue, and, I and, think. And this yes. is your platform, so to speak, yeah, that you've gotten in. Yes. Is the, is the incumbent, uh, the person that's running, that you, that, is he aware of these? He's aware of these, and he's also aware that uh, when I ran, uh, I came basically out of the woodwork to run, and my only platform was uh, on the voters' pamphlet and uh, my website. Uh -huh. And uh, just in that short time, with just that ba yeah. bare minimum information, 15% uh, of the, the voters chose me, hmm. which means... Uh, the other, you know, they, they split the, the remaining votes. So, so they know that voters are interested in truth and honor, justice, and, and uh, a system that, that respects the law. How much did you spend in the campaign? I spent zero. 
you spend nothing. Well, I my, yeah. the entry fee. The entry the, fee, which yeah, is was about four hundred dollars. About four hundred dollars or so. And that was it. That was it. Okay. So the message got out. So, so evidently, the people who got those voters pamphlets and things of that nature, who had at least had some so, knowledge of what you were all about, uh, voted for you. They did. You know, and they understood they, what you were saying. Yeah, I believe they did. And, hmm. and, uh, and that's why I think that that 15 percent, again, this was a, a span of three months. Hmm. So if I would have had the resources to to get to, to, the, to the voters, voters, that's key. Yeah. Like maybe a copy of the voters yeah. pamphlet, yeah. <laughs> you so, know, or whatever yeah. on radio or TV ads, this and the other. And it's getting it's getting pretty tough, as you can see. And yeah. you know, unless you have the money, you can't really get your message out. That's true. But I, I you know, I, but I appreciate the fact that you are you, you went out there, you went through the process. It didn't respond to you, and but you're still wanting to run for office, and you are going to run, and for this particular platform. I'd said many times before that uh, one I think uh, one of the things the most effective thing that could be done along this particular line, like yourself, is that uh, even an incumbent. Uh, when they file a run for office, they should state their platform in terms of how it's going to benefit the people, if you will, that they're going to represent, and sign it, and that becomes the contract. I like that. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And okay. I think that would be a more effective person as opposed to, quote, telling anybody what you have to do or being bought off by outside interests and whatever. Yeah. So we want to commend you. We want to commend you, and, uh, and hopefully you'll use this format that we have here at the Oregon Voters Digest. As you know, we're going to be on YouTube. And you can email this to whomever. You can email it to the press. And, and so hopefully this is another way of getting your issues out to them yeah. and giving it to them personally, knowing the fact that they got it. Sometimes they will pick it up, sometimes they won't. But I, I think that I want to commend you in all due respect to of doing it. Cause it's uh, tough to find that. people that run for office. So we want to thank you and keep going. And we'll be here at the Oregon Voters Digest. Uh, keep us abreast of what's going on and, and who you're meeting and talking to. And, and maybe periodically you can come on and sit in on my seat <laughs> and bring some folks in here to talk about some of these issues, okay? Is that yeah, fair? Very, very okay. well. Bill, this Thank is good. It's a pleasure. Thank okay, you, sir. Good. All right. Well, folks, you, you see that's what it's all about. The man got out there. He filed a run for office. He's got a platform. He's got, and he's got, he's got a goal. And so I would suggest you take the same format and do the same thing. File the run for office. Nothing, no problem. Okay, we're going to take a short break, and we're going to be back with... Uh, uh, an individual that I've known for a number of years, and she's got a new program for you. Sounds great. Be right back. Just sit right where you are. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
in, sir. Welcome to the state of Jefferson. You have safe. Come on through, partner! In November 1941, citizens of Northern California and Southern Oregon's mountainous border counties felt that they had been double-crossed and were being cheated out of taxes by the governments of their respective states. So they did what any red-blooded American would do. They tried to secede. They elected a governor, named Wairika their new capital, and started blocking off the roads in an act of secession every Thursday. They called themselves the State of Jefferson. Ultimately, the movement didn't last long. It was cut short on December 7, 1941. But those few weeks of rebellion had an indelible effect on a land already rich in a history of rugged individualism. Today, the state of Jefferson has come to be our own unique regional identity. And from our landmarks to our highways, signs that the spirit of rebellion is still alive and well surround us. We proudly fly the flag of Jefferson over our homes and our towns. We are a land of loggers and farmers, hunters and miners, lawnmower racers and cowboy action shooters, Indians and pioneers. It is a place where ranchers raise cattle in wide open valleys and backpackers traverse rocky mountain slopes, where wild animals roam and mythical creatures are more than just a figment of the imagination. In some ways, not much has changed here since our initial attempt at secession failed. And the truth is, we like it that way. So if you ever decide to pay us a visit, just remember that even if the state of Jefferson isn't a real state, it's certainly a real state of mind. The great state of Jefferson. Boy, I'm telling you. I'm, so, I mean, gee whiz, Renee, Renee, Renee Kimball, she's going to tell us about the great state of Je yeah, Jefferson. Yeah, I what are we like talking it. about, Renee? Well, Jefferson's I, Declaration. Well, What's going on? What happened was I heard about the state of Jefferson in the last California election. And that was when Tehama County and Del Norte County voted to have their own separate state. Hmm. Now, that was, in California. that was in California. Well, what I didn't know is there's actually six counties that have voted to opt out of the state of California, and it's just beginning here in Oregon. So the idea is to get enough people in a county who think this is a good idea, let's opt out of this state, let's mm -hmm. form our own state, mm -hmm. and at the same time, they're, they're building the state that they want to have. So they, there are six counties that have actually voted. All the county commissioners, almost to a one, have voted to opt out of the state of California and form their own state. And this hmm. process is now just beginning here in Oregon. Well, Texas did that not too long ago. Well, what happened to them? Well, Texas wanted to secede from the union. That's well, quite a bit different. Isn't all still we comparable well, though? not really. Yeah, we just want to be a 51st state. In other words, just like all the other ones. Right. And we'll be a 51st state, and we'll have our own governance system as far as the way things are done. And some of the, the well, what we've been working on is there's actually two groups working on the state of Jefferson. There's a group that's working on the nuts and bolts, crossing the T's and dotting the I's and doing the legal paperwork mm -hmm. and filing the documentation to make this happen. Mm -hmm. And then there's those of us, me, a couple other people my age, and a whole lot of millennials who are pushing forward with what's the marketing campaign for the state of Jefferson. And mm -hmm. what we're doing is getting people to create it in their mind. Even if you don't see it out there really in, in the physical world, why not just create it in your mind? And mm -hmm. one of the ways we're going to be doing this is creating a volunteer network. Mm -hmm. Sort of on the, the lines of, there's an organization called WOOF, W-W-O-O-F. And what they do is they bring in lots of people to go out and volunteer on farms in exchange for room and board. Well, what we're going to be doing is a system like that, but people are going to be 
donating their time and being mentored on businesses, on farms, on uh, tourist attractions, mm. on uh, employment situations. They're going to be being mentored and and brought up into a consciousness of the state of Jefferson and having an identity as to what this state can be and what we can achieve in the future. So it's an idea that a lot of people are working on. And look, the worst that can possibly happen, okay, is that some of us spend two years of our time convincing people to come and try and have a voluntary society, a basically a libertarian society, and then those people go home and take those ideas back to where they came from. Hmm. I mean, there's no downside for this as far as I'm concerned. And it's a hopeful it's a hopeful perspective on having an idea of what can be rather than always fighting what you don't want, what you're tired of, what you're sick of having around you. Hmm. So this is for me this is this is a, a win 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 for everybody. Now let's talk about Oregon. Right? Well, we, okay. Let's talk about Oregon. Okay. Is, 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 this is comparable. Well, well, ironically enough, the first state of Jefferson movement in 1941 was started in Curry County, hmm. not in California. Wairika is sort of now the center, but the original one started in Curry County. Mm -hmm. So this all started in Oregon before. And you've got boundaries. I know you've got boundaries. Yeah, these yeah. are, I, they have a, oh, no, a, one of the this. maps that they can bring you it up the of the there? state okay. of Jefferson. Okay. We can look at it and you can see... The, uh, um, are, are they familiar with the with the, the the movement that's being that you're sharing? There? You know, I went down. I spent two and a half weeks down there looking for the state of Jefferson because I heard about it, and so I took a musical tour down to the state of Jefferson, looking to find and talk to people and find out. Well, what do you know about the state of Jefferson? Do you even know you're in are the we state in California of Jefferson? Or are we in, in, Oregon? in California mainly. In California mainly. But I went down through Josephine County, down through Coase, Douglas, Josephine, Jackson, then into Siskiyou in California, Humboldt, uh, Butte. Shasta. California. So, you know, I, I traveled over a lot of different areas and talked to people about the state of Jefferson. And the, the, there's definitely an identity. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the, the current state of Jefferson. And uh, the darker one in the center was the, uh, the uh, original state of Jefferson. And these are some of the things Coming that when soon. they filed, two of the states, actually, two of the counties actually filed to have this happen on the 28th of August. So this, two this of the is California. Counties. This is all California. This is the actual filing when they went to put in their uh, paperwork with the state of California. So there's a lot of um, things that are tied together okay. in this. There isn't just one part of this movement. That's what people need to understand. There's all kinds of things like the Sheriff's Project. Are you familiar with that? No. Sheriff Mack no. and the Sheriff Projects? No. This is a project brought about by Sheriff Mack, I think he's out of Arizona, to empower, re-empower the sheriffs of the states because they are the ones who have really the, the deciding authority in a state. So there's that project. There's the grand jury registration, trying to get people to register for grand juries, understand what grand juries are all about, and actually implement them because you don't need a big, long process. So there's that one. Then the third one is there's a huge movement right now, and they're having a meeting on the 20th of this month to take back the federal lands. The federal government has way too much land in Oregon. Way too much land. In Oregon? In Oregon, yes. A large percentage of land is owned by the federal government. Excuse me, land in the state, the primarily, primarily should be owned by the state, not but isn't it by still, the feds. But, but don't you feel still strong about the fact that it's still a government of the people, by the people, and for the people? Well, not, it isn't. That's the it's whole not. point. No, it's a government of the bureaucrats, for the bureaucrats, and by the bureaucrats. It is no longer the government of the people. We haven't been involved in this since Jackson. So, you know, it's time for everybody to start realizing if you want to have a new governance system, if you want to have things be uh, open to the possibility of having some kind of a change going on here, then you're going to have to... Well, what about all these folks we elected into office? Isn't that their responsibility? Well, sure, great, but how do you hold them accountable, Bruce? Mm -hmm. There's no means built into the system to hold those people accountable. Mm -hmm. They can screw up, they can lie, they can cheat, they can steal, they can screw everybody over, they can do corrupt deals all day long, and what are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. Nothing, because mm -hmm. you can't do anything about it, and they know that. Mm -hmm. What about now, I was thinking about, um, well, the present governor of California, Governor Brown, he, he seemed to be pretty well a lackable 
liberal kind of a guy. I mean, what, what's the deal with, with well, is, he, is he aware of this movement? Well, pro, well, uh, you'd you know, have to be so. would, would would. dead, dead for stupid not to be yeah. aware of this. You'd have to be living in a cave not to be aware Any of Any comments that. from him? Do you, are you familiar with oh, any Oh, he's not going to comment on that because he's he's part of the bureaucracy. They don't want to see this happening. They laugh at all of it. They think that the people are stupid. They think that people are in, in you know, are in net and, and don't know what they want. They can't accomplish anything, that they're incapable of doing anything without the state, you know, standing over their shoulder, mm -hmm. directing every tiny little detail of everything they do. Mm -hmm. And the people in the state of Jefferson have decided, no, we want a chance to be, have autonomy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so they've started filing declarations of autonomy. In mm -hmm. other words, we want to run ourselves mm -hmm. as our own separate state. And this, there's all kinds of precedent for this. Mm -hmm. It's like North Dakota, South Dakota, you know. It's like there are lots of areas that were one state split apart and became two states. Mm -hmm. But California obviously is a pretty large state. It's a huge state, and it's obviously unmanageable because if it weren't unmanageable, <laughs> it'd be doing a lot better than it does. So what we're asking people to do is just roll the idea around in your head mm -hmm. and consider coming down to the state of Jefferson over the next year, spending some time volunteering your time and your energy, learning, mentoring, and being a part of seeing is there a possibility of creating something that has better principles and better philosophies mm -hmm. of liberty and freedom than what we've got doing now. Some of the things that, that we wanted to address, like some of the principles. Yeah. Let's, let's okay, let's, let's talk about some of the principles. Yeah, yeah. The aloidy, aloidal title. Allodial title, excuse me, let me say it right. Allodial what title. Does that mean? What does that mean? Allodial title is the concept that you own not only everything above the dirt, but you actually own the dirt. In other words, you own the mineral rights to your property, mm. and you do not have to pay rent in the form of taxes. Allodial title has been sort of abolished in the United States, except for two states. I think Wisconsin yeah, that, that and, and um, one other. I can't remember. Mm. But it's, it was took, even taken out of the dictionary in 1979 because they didn't want you to know you could actually own the dirt. So a loyal title will be reinstated in the state of Jefferson. So you can actually own the dirt, and you will not be paying rent in the form of taxes every year to the government. Things like um, there will be lots of civil forfeiture will be considered illegal. In other words, if you get busted for drugs or whatever in your car, I do not, as a bureaucratic member of society have the right to take your car before you go to trial, okay? Civil forfeiture will be illegal hmm. in the state so of that's Jefferson. that's being done now? Civil forfeiture has been done in, in a lot of states. And in some it? states, in Pennsylvania, it is just raised to a fine art. It's unbelievable. Yes, they do civil forfeiture you here know, in Oregon. Know, yeah, okay. no kidding. Okay. So we want a declining percentage of federally owned lands. We hmm. don't want the feds owning lands. We want things like marriage contracts and birth declarations are facilitated through private or religious organizations. The state doesn't say anything about it. Hmm. It's a contract between two people. Go away, form your contract, come back and show me your contract. Hmm. If you have a contract that we are in a legal binding relationship, then you get all the benefits of that relationship. I'm sorry, you have a legal binding contract. The state has nothing to say about marriage or birth. Hmm. in the state of Jefferson. And, and one of the other things is insurance will be the motivating factor instead of incarceration and punishment of people. You, the, the victim, the victim, we don't call them victim, we call them the recipient of harm. Hmm. A recipient of harm will be made whole by the perpetrator of harm. In other words, if you steal my property, then you're going to work your butt off until you pay for it. I you're not gonna, I'm not going to throw you in jail. Hmm. I'm going to take you, you're going to work here, and you're going to show up every day at this job, and I'm going to get part of your paycheck. Who's going to be the enforcement? The enforcement, that's, like I said, we're building the state of Jefferson. This is less than a year old. I think we're doing pretty good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's an idea, we're asking people to, to, you know, fire your imagination and decide what do you want in a state? What are the best things you could have that facilitate freedom and allow you the personal responsibility to take care of your own life and make your own decisions for yourself. So that's really what the state of Jefferson is all about, taking back your own personal autonomy at the same time trying to build a location where you can actually have a physical autonomy in the form of a, quote, bureaucracy, but one that's going to be a little bit more friendly to people and one that's going to understand the concept of property. 
Hmm. Hmm. Which, well, well, you know, the guest that I just interviewed, um, he had so, sort of similar concern, you know, because normally the process is that if you've got an issue, you call your elected official, sit down with them, yeah. tell them what the situation is, and yeah. then if they see that it's, it's yeah. something that's either on the books or not on the books, yeah. right? But they were going to follow up on this piece. They don't follow they up don't on anything. They don't have this process anymore. They don't follow up on anything. You, They come to the town halls, and they sit there, and they promise you this, and they promise you that. And if you hold their feet to the fire and say, oh, well, good, then I will make sure next meeting we have your response. Oh, boy, don't ever expect a response from them that you're going to bring back at the next meeting because it's not going to happen. What about your thoughts, well, as I indicated to the gentleman that was on the, the bill, about a binding contract for a person running for office at the state that platform and then file? This is the platform they're running on. Well, what about that kind of that's and fine, uh, except yeah, when you look at most of, of the platforms. Well, well, let's look at the platforms first. Okay, most of the platforms that people put out there, they have all of those wonderful little waffle words that are totally indefinable. I'm going to work for justice. Oh, define that one. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I'm no, going to no, work for equality. Real, no, the real stuff. I'm talking about the real meat. Well, like well this has been, uh, um, there's been several attempts to have one of those. In 2004, 2008, there were several of them that came out of the Libertarian Party. Really? Yeah, these were contracts. Michael Badnark right, in 2004 right, right, had right. a contract with the with the constituents, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it said, "I'm going to do this and right, I'm going right. to do that, makes and if I do me. that, you can boot my butt right yeah, out that of makes here." Sense to me. Yeah. So it, this is not something that hasn't been done. I think it's great. The more, mm -hmm. the merrier. The more what it's about contractual. Ron Paul? Is, Ron, is Ron familiar with this issue? I know you were um, You know, he's more campaign. involved in trying to promote. Uh, libertarian philosophy through the campaign for liberty and a few other things that he's promoting. He's got the Ron Paul channel now, which is a whole TV channel promoting the philosophy. So he's really in the in the in the business, so so to speak, of promoting a libertarian system and philosophy and, and principles. Okay, okay. So that's he. You know, I'm sure he's going to buy on board because we haven't even asked him yet. Okay. I've only been working with Emily probably about three weeks now, and we've already torn out the pavement to. Really? A considerable degree, and we've already attracted the interest of some people, some substantial, um, you know, people with capital who, they're not going to be, you know, hey, you know, I'm going to, you know, open my purse and hand you money, but they expect to have your everything in line and have your business plan and, and exactly what you're doing and have your budget and stick to it and stuff like that, but they have already committed without me even asking a substantial amount of money hmm. to make this happen because like I said what's the worst that can happen you have a whole bunch of people having a whole lot of fun restoring an area that sort of is woebegottenly forgotten hmm. by both states and rebuilding this sense of identity and ownership of an area that has autonomy hmm. because the people who come and build it and make it work are doing it because they want to have it happen, not because somebody's beating them up or somebody's mm -hmm. giving them a paycheck. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, now what about uh, we get, we've got an election going? On. What, what, how are you guys going to participate in, the, in this election as far as putting the issue out on the table to those folks, and how are you going to vote? Well, um, we, there's not a whole lot of time left here, and pretty much this election, I think, is just kind of a gone by. So I think as far as, oh, yeah. as, as trying to get people who are running, my main concern at the moment with the combat cup coming election is the GMO issue, which if people look into a little bit more deeply than the surface of, we've got to control those people, you're going to find that the GMO bill is all about controlling food and controlling people and has absolutely nothing to do with about genetically engineered mm. food. Mm. It's about an agenda that will be implemented after November 2nd in regard to locking up your food and making people kowtow to a set of systems that will bankrupt a lot of small food businesses in this state. You will see them go by the wayside left, right, and center if that thing passes. Wow. That thing wow. is the spawn of hell. Hmm. Hmm. It gives the, the bill. If you read the bill, they don't want you reading the bill. Mm -hmm. Read the bill. Yeah. Read it's the bill. three pages long. You can do it. It's not tough, folks. Read the bill. In the third paragraph, it gives substantial authority to Codex Alimentarius, and Codex Alimentarius is the UN determination of what is a pharmaceutical hmm. and what is not a pharmaceutical. And did you know that vitamin C is a pharmaceutical and should be subject to regulation and prescription? So I don't think we want to give Codex Alimentarius 
any credit whatsoever. And the GMO labeling bill gives them credit in the third paragraph. Wow. So this is not a good bill. It is not well written. It is not well thought out. It will decimate small food businesses in this state. And as, as a libertarian, I was all for it. I went, you can't control these jerks. There's nothing you can do. Rein them in or, you know, tie their hands up, do something. But after I looked at the bill, after I looked at the situation, after I did the financials, I went, this is not a good idea. Wow. So wow. for the coming election, people really need to do their due diligence on this yes, thing and yes, understand yes. it's not good. I'd want to spend, I'd want to spend a little time on the, the whole marijuana situation in, in, in Oregon. I'd like for you to come back. Can we talk about oh, that yeah. at some point yeah, in time? Yeah, sure. Okay, good. Well, then this has been great. Thank you. Great. Thanks for And thanks back. for the time to do this. Okay. Oh, can I give you a You're website? Right, 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 oh. We're about ready to do it. We, 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 okay, we, two we, minutes off. Okay, thanks. Okay. But thanks again. All right. It's thanks. Been a pleasure. Thank nice you. Thing. Tell everybody I said hi. I will. Okay, thank Folks, you. thank you very much for being with us. Hey, we'll see you next week with another exciting guest and program. Take care. Have a good one. Enjoy the weather, at least through September, right? <laughs> we hope. Yep. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>